For those of you who don't know Graves disease, and I'll dive into this a little more because it's not like very commonly talked about, I have hyperthyroid. So that's like the first thing to understand. And when my hyperthyroid was really bad, there came the question of like, okay, what's causing that? Is your thyroid just not working right? Or is there another cause that's causing your thyroid to be hyper? That was my case. Graves disease was something I was diagnosed with when they found out my thyroid was hyper. So everyone gets that wrong. Graves disease was essentially most likely first and hyperthyroidism came as a symptom from that. Now Graves disease also had a number of other symptoms that were not great. So a big one was my eyes started bulging out of my head. Now I don't have that now, but Graves disease, when it was at its worst, definitely made them really bad. They would literally bulge out of my head, both of them. And it was really bad, especially bad when, I think it was this eye was a lot bigger and bulgier than this one. It was almost like this one was lazy eye at all times and this one was bulging. That's a massive difference. Terrible, <laughs> terrible for my self-confidence, self-esteem. So that was a major one. And I've, like Graves disease is something that never goes away. So even if you get your symptoms under control, which was the goal? Usually it only takes a year to control those symptoms. But for some people like me, it takes a lot longer. And for me, it took me over six years of this eye problem. And I was also very shaky. Like I would hold a coffee cup and I would shake the coffee out of the cup. I couldn't even like cut a pancake. I would like probably fling the pancake. Like it was so bad. Last but not least, another major one was hair loss, symptom of Graves disease. Now they say if you get Graves disease under control that your hair loss may get better, may come back. And some Graves disease people, it'll kind of like go in waves. Even after their hair comes back a little more, it's still the Graves disease texture. And it's funny because the public may not notice this. Like people who don't have Graves disease don't always notice this. Like they'll see a Graves disease person with their hair coming back and they'll just think their hair is perfect again. Like, what do you need to worry about? Eh, got more hair, but the texture's like never the same. The texture becomes wiry. So if I could give like any advice to anyone out there who either has Graves disease like me or alopecia or struggling with cancer, like when is the right time to wear a wig? I would say, if you're sitting there at home, if you ever have moments where you're not feeling good about your hair, and that's like a light way of putting it, people with hair loss know what I'm talking about, and it's, it's darker than that, unfortunately. If you're sitting there at home and you're, you've lost a sense of self, because, okay, let's get into it this way. Nobody talks about this a lot, but, and those who don't have hair loss don't usually understand the depth and the disaster you feel inside when you start losing your hair. Because when you have hair, you can look at someone and say, okay, they don't have hair. That must be really hard for them. But it's not the same as losing it yourself because my dad, for example, he had cancer, he lost his hair, but I've known him for so long without hair that it never occurred to me, oh, I wonder if it bothers him. I wonder if it's hard on him. It never like clicked. Like, of course, if you're a kind individual, like you have those heartfelt moments where your heart just aches for them. You feel as though like, oh, I wish I could help them. That's so sad. It's not the same though. Cause when I got it, I remember my hair was like falling out on my pillow. I would go to sleep at night on like a silk pillowcase, like best pillowcase for your hair that you can buy. And I wake up in the morning, there would be clumps. Like, you know when you shower and you wash your hair like normal 
and you'll get like some shedding and some days you're like wow that's a lot of hair and other days like you may not have as much well take that lot of hair maybe like triple it a bit and that's the amount that would like fall out on my pillow and then you're thinking what about all the things in my life that I care about and like to do and how people view me and your brain your brain just starts going like all of these things that you've ever wondered and cared about just kind of like crumbling just a bit like crashing down like your walls are breaking which makes them build up stronger in kind of a bad way all of that to lead back to if you are sitting at home and you feel like that and you feel not like yourself with more heaviness to it more gravity that is when it's time to wear a wig because after you try on your first wig, even if it's not what you expected, guaranteed you're gonna feel at least a little better. Even if you picked a, the wrong wig for yourself, you're gonna feel a little better. Like I did, I picked the wrong wigs for years actually because I knew nothing. And that's okay because it eventually got me to this point where I feel great, like I'm wearing a wig right now. I wasn't always at this point and if you had asked me to sit here or talk about this, like, I don't know, seven years ago, I wouldn't have, there's no way. And in fact, if you would have asked me or I listened to somebody tell me, if you feel sad at home, it's time to wear a wig, I would have said no. Or I just wouldn't have admitted it. I wouldn't have gone to anyone and said, hey, um, I saw this or I heard this. Someone told me this, I think it's time for me to wear a wig. I wouldn't have done it. So I understand. I understand people who are not ready and who may need like an extra push or some advice or like where to start. I get it because it's not easy. And what looks good on somebody may not look good on you. And that's the reality. So that's why it's hard. And I feel like there's a lot of fear and anxiety around like, hey, well, I want my hair to be better. That's a given but I don't know if I can do the whole wig thing because that's sounding a little scary. Like, where do I even begin? What do I do? If you're at home and it comes back to this and you feel that way, it is still time. It is still time, reach out, like do a consultation, like just put something on your head that looks better than your own. And I can say this because I've been through it, it might sound harsh, but you just need to like do it. You just need to get outside of your house and do it or order something, get it sent to you and try it on in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go anywhere. Sit in front of your mirror and yeah, the wig, when you first put it on your head, it might feel like this is a lot of hair. This, I don't know if it feels like me. Well, it's not gonna feel like you right away because it's not your hair different but that's okay that's like the whole point that's the only way to make it through this railway crossing of this train that's trying to take you out every day wigs are for you it'll save you money you'll feel better that's I think if I yeah any advice that would be 